all. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We are with Johnson and Walsh University. We'd like to thank Robert and Kathy for joining us this afternoon. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Robert. All right. Well, thank you all so much for allowing us to be here today. We thank uh, the Game Plan College organization for giving us a little bit of their time. Uh, but I always like to start off uh, with a little bit of information about myself. Uh, but my name's Robert Penry, and I'm actually a graduate of Johnson & Wells. Uh, I was part of the first graduating class of 2008 from the Charlotte, North Carolina campus. Uh, and that's where I received my associate's degree in culinary arts, my bachelor's degree in food service management. And just a few years ago, I also finished up my master's of business administration uh, with a concentration in hospitality. Uh, I've actually worked in the food service industry in some form or fashion for many years, but for the past 10 years, I've worked for the university in the admissions office. Uh, one of my first positions, I was one of our high school culinary demonstrators. And in that job, I traveled all across the southeastern United States. I basically got to live in hotels for about 10 months a year and I would travel to different schools each day and do uh, cooking demonstrations and also talk to them about Johnson and Wells. Uh, also back in 2015, I decided that I had really spent enough of my life living out of hotels and I wanted to spend a little bit more of my time at my home here in Charlotte. Uh, so I took a new position as an admissions officer. Uh, now my primary of, of focus is working with students that are interested in our culinary uh, programs. But of course, I am very well versed in all of the programs of study that we offer. So any questions you have whatsoever, uh, please feel free to ask those uh, through the chat box. We'll be glad to answer those. Um, but one of my favorite things about being an admissions officer is uh, I'm a first generation uh, college student myself and I know what my family and I went through to, to get myself to Johnson & Wells. So uh, I just like working with students and families just trying to make the admissions and enrollment process as easy as possible. So we can go ahead and get started here and we know as students are looking at different colleges and universities uh, they typically have a lot of questions and you know some of these questions are very simple to answer and some are a little bit more complex but hopefully today we'll be able to answer some of the questions you may have um, but ultimately our goal at Johnson & Wells is not necessarily to just get help our students get a job after they graduate. Our goal is to help our students build both a life and a career that they'll love. And again, hopefully we're going to share some ways of how Johnson & Wells can help you do that today. So Johnson & Wells, we've actually been around for quite a while. Uh, we were originally founded back in 1914 in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, and we were founded as a business school with just a student, a teacher, and a typewriter. So uh, we've grown quite a bit in our hundred and what, six years now. Uh, we currently have four campus locations. We have our main campus in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, we have the campus I actually work directly at, and that is our newest campus in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, and then we also also have two other regional campuses, one in Denver, Colorado, and our uh, final fourth and final campus is located in North Miami, Florida. Uh, but we originally founded uh, as just a, uh, a school with a student, a teacher, and a typewriter. So to have four campuses now with over 16,000 students and over 50 different majors, uh, we've we've done a, a tremendous job over the past uh, you know century adding the programs that we feel are most interested to our students. So uh, we are very well known for our hands-on education through what we call experiential education. I'm sure all of you can guess the keyword there being experience. Uh, so we like our students being hands-on and involved. Uh, so what you just saw was a few photographs of what we call our industry-based learning labs. Now, of course, for our students that are interested in culinary and baking and pastry arts, that's pretty easy to figure out what those labs are. That's our production kitchens and bake shops. But but uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot to offer our students besides just culinary and food related programs. Uh, for example, we have a fashion merchandising program and the lab for that uh, program is on our fifth floor of our academic center and they actually took out one of the front walls of the classrooms and they installed storefront windows. So in that lab, they're learning about visual merchandising and point of sale systems. 
The photograph you see on the screen here is what we call our Student Innovation Lab. It's for our College of Business students. And of course, it's hard to see from one photograph, but it's got all the latest and greatest uh, technology and gadgets. It's got the New York Stock Exchange ticker going across the wall 24 hours a day. Uh, as you can see, all of the students are kind of gathered up in that one little area. Uh, so it has that modular furniture that allows, you know, educators and students to kind of assemble their workspace as needed. Uh, we're seeing that in a lot of companies, you know, those shared workspace environments. But you know, these are the same types of uh, settings that you're going to be working in as you progress and move about your career. So we really just try to get our students as accustomed to those settings as early on as possible. Our campus uh, in Charlotte is unique in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I spend most of my focus and attention uh, talking about the Charlotte campus, but of course I'll bring in uh, some additional information about our other campuses. But I figure today, since uh, we're speaking with students all over the, the Durham area, it'd be uh, appropriate to focus on Charlotte. Uh, but Charlotte is actually our newest campus. Um, and it's actually the only campus of Johnson & Wells that was pretty much 100% built from the ground up. So they were able to design it exactly how they wanted it. And one thing they really wanted to make sure of was the ability to give our students that small classroom setting. So on average, you're gonna see about 22 students to one instructor. It's certainly not uncommon to have fewer than that, but that is the average. Um, but the real benefit to that small class classroom setting is our students are really able to build relationships with their instructors. You know, you're going to get to know them. Uh, they're going to get to know you. Uh, the instructors also really like to get to know what their students' career interests are so they can kind of tailor their education delivery throughout the semester. Uh, because of these small class sizes, if an, an instructor has uh, a student or uh, a few of their students that maybe need a little extra help, their instructors are, are going to be there to help them because, you know, there's not, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students in that one class. So we're really big believers in that small classroom setting. Not only are we the newest campus, we're also uh, the second largest. So right now, Charlotte, we have about 1,600 students, uh, which might seem relatively small for those of you that have been looking at, you know, other diff other colleges and universities, which we always encourage students to do. Uh, but our main campus in Providence, Rhode Island, has a little over 9,000 students. Uh, our Miami campus has right around 1,200, and our smallest campus would be the campus located in Denver, Colorado, which which has uh, just under a thousand students. But even though we have one of the smaller campus populations in Charlotte, uh, we have one of the most diverse student populations. And as you can see from the screen here, uh, right now our students represent 48 states and, and 15 countries. And there's a, a, a tremendous learning benefit from that diversity because all of our students are coming from different walks of life. You know, they have different backgrounds, they're different age ranges, they have different levels of experience. All of that diversity really allows you know, each of our students to kind of bring something different to the table. So in the end, not only are our students learning from their instructors, they're also spending a lot of time learning from each other because of that diversity. So one of my favorite things uh, about our university is our faculty. We have some amazing instructors across all four of our campuses. I'm just going to highlight a couple of Charlotte uh, specific faculty members. On the left hand side of the screen you see Chef Harry P. Muller. Uh, Chef P. Muller was actually my introduction to baking and pastry arts instructor my freshman year. He's been with the campus uh, literally from day one. Uh, just a few years ago, he was invited to compete with Team USA in the Coupe de Monde, which is basically the World Olympics of bread baking. Um, but we were very excited. We got a call all the way from Paris, France. That's where it's usually held. And it was Chef P. Muller letting us know that he and his team took second place in the world, a silver medal recipient. So uh, again, just a, a tremendous asset and wealth of knowledge for our Charlotte students. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see uh, Dr. P. 
We all like to call her Dr. P and that's what she wants us to call her. Um, so she teaches primarily within our College of Hospitality and she has been instrumental in getting dozens of students each year to the US Open and US Masters golf tournaments. Uh, not necessarily to watch, although I'm sure some watching does take place, but uh, she's, she's sending our students there to work, to gain that real world work experience and really build their resumes before they even graduate from the university. So now you've learned a little bit about the university, I want to discuss a little bit about the programs of study that we offer. Uh, again, today I'm really going to focus in on the programs that we offer at the Charlotte campus, uh, because again, being such close proximity to uh, Durham, I wanted to focus on that today. Uh, but please keep in mind, if you don't happen to see a program that we offer at the Charlotte campus that interests you, definitely check out our website. It's jwu.edu, uh, because again, we have our three other campuses that offer majors that we don't offer in Charlotte and you may very well find a degree program that does interest you at one of our other three campuses but again let's focus on the Charlotte campus. So we were originally founded as a, uh, a business school so that's what I'm going to start with. The College of Business uh, as you can see we have degree programs like business administration, corporate accounting, fashion merchandising, and marketing. Uh, some of our degree programs are very specific to a particular industry like fashion merchandising or corporate accounting, which I do always like to add. Uh, Charlotte's actually the second largest financial district second to New York. Uh, so that program was designed specifically for our campus um, and is actually not offered at any of our other three campuses. They do, however, offer general accounting programs. Uh, all of the degree programs within the college business are four-year bachelor's of science degrees. So next up, we have the College of Hospitality, and the way I like to kind of define hospitality is basically anything having to do with people in the general public. So within this college, we have degree programs in food and beverage industry management, hotel and resort management, as well as sports, entertainment, and event management. Uh, those have been offered at the Charlotte campus since we've been opening, but we're very excited. We've actually taken our very popular sports, entertainment, and event management program and broken it down into two separate programs, and we're very excited about those starting uh, for the fall of 2021. And then we have the College of Arts and Sciences. This is one area of the Charlotte campus in particular that we are growing. Uh, for several years now, we've been offering our liberal studies and media and communication studies programs, um, but we are very excited that starting this fall, we will be offering three new programs, uh, which will be health science. And of course, with everything going on in the world right now, that's it's a huge industry. So we're very excited about bringing that to the Charlotte campus. Uh, we will also be introducing Introducing psychology and public health uh, this fall. Uh, for fall of 2021, uh, we will be offering an economics program, and those are going to be either a bachelor's of science or bachelor's of arts degree, again, both four years in length. And then we have the College of Food Innovation and Technology, or what we like to, uh, what we like to call CFIT. We love acronyms at Johnson & Wells, so I apologize if I blurt out an acronym and don't describe what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, but within our College of Food Innovation and Technology, or CFIT, uh, the first two years, the students are really going to spend most of their time in those production kitchens, uh, learning the craft of, of culinary and baking and pastry. Uh, and of course, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're also going to be taking some math courses, some English courses, history, science, all those classes we, we love so much as students. And, and, and don't get me wrong, those classes are important uh, for students and all of our students, no matter their major, will be taking those general type study courses. Uh, but we do kind of spread those throughout the curriculum. Uh, once our students have a strong foundation on of the, the, the cooking and baking side, they then, then transition into their bachelor's portions. And as you can see from the screen, we have four options, really kind of depending on what the student's career career interests are. For students that want to maybe become a research and development chef, we have applied food science. 
if they want to become a uh, sports nutritionist or be an executive chef for an athletics team uh, that really needs to focus on nutrition, we have our culinary nutrition program. Uh, for our students that aren't gearing towards science and nutrition, they want to really kind of focus on the, the traditional food service industry. Uh, for students that want to get into higher level positions within the food service industry, we have our food and beverage industry management program. Um, but some of our students, they maybe don't want to be managers. They want to be owners and operators. So we introduced food and beverage entrepreneurship. Uh, but again, all of the students within uh, the College of Food Innovation and Technology uh, will graduate with a four-year Bachelor's of Science degree. And then one last bit of exciting news about the Charlotte campus where it's a very exciting year for us. Uh, we will be starting to offer uh, graduate level programs on our campus. Now uh, graduate level programs are not new to Johnson & Wells. Our other campuses have been offering these programs for many years, but this will be the first time that they're actually offered at the Charlotte campus, so we're very excited. Um, but with it being new, we're going to start off kind of slow. Uh, this fall we're going to be starting off with just a, a general Master's of Business Administration program, also known as an MBA. Uh, and we are already looking at adding additional programs as well as concentrations. And we will also be looking at developing a, an accelerated degree program that allows students to transition directly from their bachelor's degree into their master's degree and complete that in one calendar year. Uh, some colleges advertise that as like a four plus one program. So essentially the same for us as well. And that pretty much completes kind of the academic component, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're very big into hands-on learning through experiential education. So I want to go a little bit uh, deeper into that. Really the goal with experiential education is to help our students not just graduate with a powerful degree, uh, but also a powerful resume. And on the screen here, you're going to see a list of about 30 companies, and there's some uh, very big names there. You probably recognize quite a few of them. Uh, but this is a very small representation of the over 300 internship sites we have for our students. Um, some of our students, they like to stay around the Charlotte area. They kind of get settled in. Some of our students maybe will do an internship in their hometown or some will go to a different part of the country that they've never been to and do an internship. Uh, but our Experiential Education Office has done a really great job uh, increasing the number of paid internships. I know a lot of times when we hear internship, we think, oh great, a lot of work and a little bit of pay or no pay. Uh, but Experiential Education has worked hard to increase the number of paid internships at Johnson & Wells to 75%. Uh, when I was a student here, maybe 10 to 15% of the internships were paid. So that's an awesome job they've done. Uh, nearly the same amount, 74% of students that successfully complete a paid internship, and I want to highlight successfully, um, but they are offered employment with that internship location after the internship is over. Uh, so again, numbers we're very, very proud of. We actually feel so strongly about experiential education, we've actually made internships a requirement of many of our degree programs um, at Johnson & Wells. Another way our students can really kind of enhance their experiential education is having the opportunity to study abroad. Uh, right now we actually have over 70 different study abroad programs that are spread across six continents. And probably one of the most common questions I get from students and families because I am a graduate of Johnson & Wells is, if I had to go back and kind of do it over again, what would I do differently? And I'll be honest with you, I had no plans whatsoever of, uh, you know, staying in Charlotte. But, you know, if I had to go back and do it over again, I would have done everything possible uh, to have studied abroad. It just didn't work out for me at the time. Uh, but everyone I really have talked to over the years that did a study abroad program, uh, when they got back to the US, they, they literally just could not stop talking about their experience. And I, I heard the term life changing on more than one occasion. So if that's something that interests you. Um, you really do wanna definitely take advantage of that opportunity. 
With that said, that pretty much completes the academic and experiential education component of the presentation. And, you know, that's most important. That's why our students are, are here with us at Johnson & Wells is, is to get an education and really use that education throughout their career. Uh, but college in itself is also about the experience. And we, we take great pride um, at Johnson & Wells in giving our students the full college experience, whether that's uh, residential life, Greek life, clubs and organizations, uh, athletics, um, but they say a typical college student actually only spends about 20% of their time in college physically sitting in class. So you spend about 30% of your life sleeping. So what are you going to do with the other 50% of your time? So a couple of things that you can do at Johnson & Wells is get involved in clubs and organizations. And as you're kind of reading through the list, again, this is a very small representation of clubs that we offer at Johnson & Wells. You'll see some that are related to the majors that we offer. Uh, some are maybe just geared towards fun, uh, allowing our students to have some fun, relax, connect with classmates and other Johnson & Wells students that have the same interests as them. Uh, for any of you that want to get involved in fraternity and sorority life, we do have that on each of our four campuses as well. Down towards the bottom of the screen, the third from last bullet, you see national student organizations. And with those, I'm talking about clubs like FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, DECA for marketing students, FCCLA, FFA. Um, these are clubs that are actually offered at the high school level. So some of you maybe have already been a member of some of these organizations. If you would like to continue your involvement in those clubs, we offer the collegiate level, the college level level of those uh, organizations on each of our campuses. Not only are they a really great way for you to continue your involvement, uh, your involvement in those organizations also often lead to some really great scholarship opportunities as well. Now we know athletics is a big deciding factor for a lot of students when it comes to choosing the right college and we have a really great growing athletics program. So at the Charlotte campus being the newest campus, we've uh, only been in Charlotte for what 16 years now. So uh, we're, we're still fairly young, we're growing. So uh, for several years, we've been offering uh, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, as well as women's volleyball. Um, but we're very excited that this fall, we're going to be offering three new sports for both men's and women's, and those will be golf, uh, cross country, and tennis. Um, all of our athletics programs at the Charlotte campus are USC AA Division II, um, but again, we have athletics programs at all four campuses. We offer uh, lacrosse at some of our campuses. We offer uh, sailing at our Providence campus. We have uh, lots of different club, or excuse me, uh, athletics that might interest you. So definitely check out JWU Athletics athletics.com. Now, for those of you that are like myself, I like to stay active, but I'm not so much on the competitive level of athletics. Um, we do also have some really great intramural athletics for students that want to stay active and, and like sports, but not necessarily for um, the, the competitiveness of that, more for the socializing and, and the staying active. And we're going to finish out uh, our last little bit of time today uh, talking about the city of Charlotte. And, you know, the, the city that you choose to, to go off to college to is a big deciding factor. Now, of course, you have to find schools that offer the major that you are interested in and want to use in your career. Um, but you're also going to be living there for, for four years if you're working on a bachelor's degree. So uh, you also want to make sure that's going to be a place you're comfortable living. And again, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't have the plans to to stay in Charlotte. I grew up on a small beach town on the coast of North Carolina, and I just didn't see Charlotte as somewhere I'd be calling home, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but I absolutely fell in love with the city, and 16 years later, here I am. Um, but Charlotte, we're constantly voted in the top 10 of this, the top 10 of that list. If you like to eat, of course, we have some really great alumni owned and operated um, uh, restaurants and bakeries and food trucks in the area. Um, if you're a sports fan, there's a ton to do. Uh, two blocks from campus, we have the Charlotte Knights AAA baseball team. Right behind our residence halls, we have the Bank of America Carolina Panthers Pro Football. We've got Major League Soccer that's talking about coming to Charlotte, so we pretty much have all the sports covered. Um, but if sports are not really your thing, you know, we have great 
museums, art exhibits, live entertainment venues, shopping districts, but really is just a, a phenomenal city growing each and every year. Um, but most importantly, I think Charlotte is a phenomenal city for employment and careers. If you're familiar with our, our skyline, as you, if you can see my cursor right now, I'm kind of circling uh, the tallest building in Charlotte, what we like to call the, the crown jewel of the Queen City. Um, that is actually the world headquarters for Bank of America. So out of everywhere in the world, you know, they chose Charlotte as their home. And that really says a lot about our city. Uh, the bank is just one of seven Fortune 500 companies that have their world headquarters in the Charlotte area. Um, but we actually have over 250 other Fortune 500 companies that have uh, pretty large regional operations. Um, so again, just a, a per a uh, lot of great employment and career opportunities for our students. Now, you may not really think this, but Bank of America, this humongous banking organization, they even gave me an opportunity uh, as a culinary student. I actually did my internship right at the top two floors, 59th and 60th. I'm kind of circling it uh, with my cursor there. Um, that's where I worked for about three months during my internship doing corporate executive fine dining for the bank which is actually run by Compass Group, uh, North America's largest food service employer. Um, so there again, just some tremendous opportunities for, for growth and careers. So I know it's a, a lot of information to take in in a short amount of time, um, but I do want to go over one last little bit of information, um, kind of your next steps. If you would decide to apply to Johnson & Wells, and I hope each and every one of you will, um, the first step, of course, you want to apply for admission. Um, the easiest way to do that is directly online through our website, um, but we're also a member of the Common App. You can apply through CFNC, College Foundation North Carolina, and of course, we have paper applications available as well. Um, no matter how you choose to apply, the application is free. We do not charge an application fee. We never have. Uh, and once we have your application, the only other piece of information we will need from you will be your transcripts, your high school transcripts if you're coming straight from high school. Um, if you're a transfer student, of course, we would need to also see your previous college transcripts as well. Uh, Johnson & Wells, all four campuses are test optional for uh, a majority of our programs. There are a few exceptions, um, but very few. Um, so for the most part, you do not have to submit SAT or ACT scores to um, apply to Johnson & Wells. Um, however, I encourage you, if you have taken the SAT or ACT at the time you apply, go ahead and send us your scores because one, uh, those test scores, having those on file, sometimes can help students get accepted. Um, they can also be linked to academic merit scholarship opportunities, which is why I personally encourage it. Um, but keep in mind, they are never negatively used to impact a student. We only use them positively. Uh, Johnson & Wells also operates on rolling admissions. And basically what that means for you as a student is there is no deadline to apply. We review applications year round. Um, However, we always still encourage students to start the application process earlier. Uh, the earlier, the better. That gives you more time to complete enrollment steps should you be accepted and decide to attend that school. Um, but again, there is no hard and fast deadline to apply. The only deadline that we are uh, going to observe if you're applying for the fall semester uh, is what we call early action admissions decision, which is non-binding. Uh, what that means is if we have your application and your transcripts in our office by November 1st, um, you will be in the first round of admissions decisions that we send out on November 15th. Um, Otherwise, you can apply at any time, but early action is, is really just designed for our students that want to get their decision as quickly as possible. Um, otherwise, we typically send out our rolling admissions decisions after the first of the new year. Uh, students should also be spending time during their senior year uh, filling out their free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. Um, it's maybe not the most fun and exciting thing to do in the world, but you definitely want to do it. And any school you're considering um, will have a school code. Ours is 003404. Um, just to keep in mind, that does come up listed as the Providence Rhode Island campus, and that's okay. All four campuses, no matter which one you apply to, all four of them use that same FAFSA code. You want to start your FAFSA as soon after October 1st of each year that you're going to be enrolled in your college. So um, the earlier, the better on that FAFSA deadline. 
Uh, students should also be spending a lot of time looking for and applying for outside scholarships. And I can't stress this enough. There's millions and millions of dollars uh, in scholarships that go unawarded every year because students maybe don't apply or they say, oh, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm qualified, so I'm not going to apply for that. But I encourage you, it doesn't matter if it's $200 scholarship or a $20,000 scholarship, they literally all add up and is well worth the time uh, spent looking for and applying for outside scholarships. So you've been Robert, accepted. We, yes, yes, Kathy Jo. I'm sorry, we have a couple, we have a couple of questions sure. that relate to this. Uh, what merit scholarships do you offer to competitive students and what are the criteria for these scholarships? So our uh, merit-based scholarships, we review every student um, at the time of their acceptance. So if you have applied and been accepted to the university, we will automatically uh, review you for merit-based scholarships from Johnson & Wales. You don't have to apply separately for those. The outside scholarships, those are ones you have to apply for uh, separately. For our merit-based scholarship, uh, a large majority of it is going to be based on the student's academic performance. So uh, the higher you're able to keep your GPA up, the, the better off you're going to be, uh, not just for scholarship opportunities, but also for being accepted to the colleges that you're interested in. Um, I always tell students GPAs are very easy to go down and very hard to bring back up and not saying it can't be done, um, but we want our students to really keep their GPAs as, as high as they possibly can. Um, so uh, a large majority of our merit-based scholarship is going to be based on your academic performance, um, but we're also going to be looking at your application information, what you were involved in in high school, different clubs and organizations, uh, religious activities, uh, community service, work experience, athletics. We're going to take all of that into consideration in building your merit-based scholarship. Um, students that are awarded a merit-based scholarship will know that amount up front. It will be on your official acceptance letter and packet and that amount will be guaranteed and renewable for up to four years so um, you would get that amount each year for four years okay um, we, we have yep. another we have another question if I don't want to interrupt you are you through with that part? yep absolutely um, do you offer funding to international students and undocumented students we do work with students uh, for merit-based scholarships for both, um, uh, excuse me, for international and undocumented students. Uh, so they will still be reviewed for merit-based scholarships. Great. Okay. Thank Any you. other questions? Well, there is one other. We might as well address that while yeah, we're Yeah, absolutely. How, how would you describe the school culture? So each campus is going to be a little bit different, obviously, you know, with our Charlotte campus being one of the smaller campuses and Providence being the uh, largest campus. Uh, so you're going to have a little bit of difference in campus size and that really affects the culture. Um, but what I love about Johnson & Wells, even on our, our largest campus in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, we are like a family. Uh, we we all kind of get to know each other, even, even at 9,000 students. That's really, you know, a small university compared to some of the larger schools out there. So even with that, you still have that kind of sense of family and belonging. Uh, so I, I'd say we have the, the culture of family on each of our four campuses. Okay. And another question just popped up. What are the programs that require test scores? As we were talking, you were talking a minute ago about the uh, being test optional. The only one that I'm aware of is the biology program in Providence, Rhode Island. Yes, I believe that right now is the only uh, program that we are requiring SAT or ACT scores. I would say as if we are looking at adding some additional health related programs, that's where that primarily will be. But for the most part, most of our programs are still test optional. And do you know the average test score for, the, for that? I do not. I apologize off the top of my head, um, but I, I will share to. my um, contact information at the at the very end of the presentation. Feel free to take a screenshot of it. If you will email me, I will certainly do the research offline and definitely get back with you. 
Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. So after you have done all of your research, you've uh, looked at all of your different college options, and we always encourage students to look at and apply to multiple colleges um, because not every college is necessarily the right fit for every student, and only you, the student, can make the decision if that college is going to be right for you. Um, but after you've done all of your research, you've been, you've applied, you've been accepted, you've talked to people on campus, you've talked to staff members, you've visited campus campus and you've decided Johnson & Wells is uh, the best fit school for you, that's when you want to submit your reservation fee and, and you'll see that kind of process with most colleges out there. Um, we have pushed back out uh, with everything going on uh, with the world, with the coronavirus. We have pushed our deadline um, back a month. Typically most colleges observe a May 1st deadline. Um, we are going to push that back to June 1st to give students and families um, some additional time. But keep in mind, we will continue working with students um, past June 1st, but that's just kind of our suggested deadline to give students enough time to complete all of their enrollment steps as well. But of course, we'll continue working with students. But basically what that reservation fee will do once you once you submit that is it's going to secure your spot in class. It's going to let us know you're planning to attend. Um, just like you're going to have a lot to do to get ready to go off to college, we will have a lot to do to get ready for all of our incoming students. So again, this lets us know you're planning to attend. Uh, it will secure your spot in class and it will also allow you to set up your student portal um, what we call JWU link JWU link and that's where you're going to do other things like housing placement testing reviewing your financial aid information your class schedule um, but again all of that will be part of your enrollment steps that you take care of after the reservation fee has been paid so we are in a time where unfortunately we can't right now welcome uh, visitors to campus. We're all working remotely from our home offices as many of you are doing uh, as well as students. Um, but we do have a really great virtual campus tour available on our website. I encourage you to take a, a screenshot or you know uh, grab your phone and, and take a snapshot of the screen here. Um, this just kind of directs you how to log on to our virtual tour that we host on our website. You can access that 24 hours a day seven days a week. Um, but we also have some really great ways for you to kind of visit from home virtually. Um, during the week, we offer uh, Monday through Friday, twice daily, our virtual admissions presentation and campus tour. Um, the only difference between the virtual campus tour doing it yourself on the website versus what we're doing weekly is we actually have one of our collegiate ambassador team members, a current student, uh, that actually kind of narrates the tour versus the, the virtual tour guide you'll see online. So definitely uh, check us out. Um, we are so excited and, hope, and hoping for the best that we can get back on campus. We have lots of other great ways that you can visit in person, um, but working with all of the stay-at-home orders and social distancing Thing, um, we, we definitely want to promote our virtual options for the time being. But definitely keep in contact with us. We are hoping as soon as possible to welcome our first visitors back on campus as soon as we can. So I do want to thank all of you for taking time to join us today. Again, my name is Robert Penry. Uh, my contact information is on the screen. As I mentioned, uh, I know exactly what some of you may be going through being a first generation college student myself. I know this can be a stressful process. It can be time consuming and confusing, um, but we are here to help. That's why admissions exist. That's why Kathy Jo Mitchell, who is the uh, local admissions representative for the Durham area, is online with us today. Um, also take advantage of great resources like you're doing today. This Game Plan College is an awesome resource um, to help you through this process, but know that I am here anytime you want to reach out to me, whether that's by phone, social media, email, um, but that's my ultimate goal is to really make this process for you and your family as, as seamless as we can. So again, thank you all very much for joining us, and at this time I'd like to open it up for any uh, final questions. Robert, I get several questions frequently in classrooms. Uh, what is food like on campus? I know you're the foodie of all foodies. <laughs> I, I am. Um, so our food is um, through a contract dining service called Chartwells, and you'll see a, a lot of uh, colleges campus are the same. We do have a lot of our students that work in the dining uh, uh, dining center on campus as a part-time job. We also have some interns there as well, um, and it is going to be buffet style, so you're allotted a certain number of meals per week based on the meal 
meal plan that you choose and you can go in and it is literally all you can eat buffet each day every day every meal uh, there will be different stations set up there will be a pizza and pasta station there'll be a home cook station a salad bar dessert station a grill station um, we also have a great station for for people that have dietary restrictions uh, you know or uh, are, are vegetarians or vegans so um, we have a really great dining center uh, on campus and you addressed this a little bit earlier uh, as since you were a Johnson & Wales student can you elaborate a little bit on how your experience was on campus yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was part of the uh, first graduating class of 2008. So I actually started uh, classes there in 2004, which was the very first year the campus opened. So that was an awesome opportunity uh, for myself to experience that. Um, and I can certainly tell you I had an awesome experience as a student and I, I truly and honestly did but so much has changed since then um, you know going from a brand new campus to a campus that's been uh, here for 16 years now it's changed tremendously um, but you know even a brand new campus I was involved in clubs and organizations I was uh, involved in our collegiate ambassador team which is a, a team we have in our admissions office uh, and they really help us out giving our, our guests uh, different tours each week they help us out with all of our own campus events um, so I was involved I also worked uh, pretty much full-time throughout my my education at Johnson & Wales so uh, I did spend a lot of time working also I lived on campus my first two years uh, as we do have a two-year residency requirement of many of our campuses uh, my first year I lived in our residence halls which are set up um, suite style so as you walk into each suite there's two bedrooms each bedroom houses two students so there will be a total of four students in the suite but what I really liked about um, our residence halls was each suite also had its own bathroom and, and uh, shower facilities right in the suite um, and then for second year and above students, we have apartment style housing and those are set up uh, most of the apartments are four bedrooms, two bathrooms, so you will still be living with a total of four people, um, but each student will have their own private bedroom. They'll share a um, semi-private bath with just one of the other um, residents in that apartment, uh, but they do also have full kitchens, uh, washers and dryers in each apartment, and a lot of our um, apartments also have balconies overlooking the city as well, but had a great experience as, as a Johnson & Wells student. And one last common question that I get often, can, student, can freshmen have cars on campus? Yes, we do allow all of our students, no matter what year they are, to have uh, cars on campus. But keep in mind that, again, no matter what college you're looking at, uh, parking on campus is going to be an additional cost so you want to see if that additional cost out you know outweighs having the car there uh, I know me personally when I was a student there I went to school uptown I lived uptown I worked uptown so there would be literally weeks that I didn't even move my car um, I did bring it and I liked having it there but I definitely did not need it um, and and probably was not worth the expense but if you feel like you need a car and want a car bring one um, I always encourage students maybe bring it your first uh, first semester see how much you use it if you see you aren't really driving many places you know take it home at the winter break and leave it there or or do the opposite come without a car see if you need it and you can always uh, go back home and, and pick it up if needed any other questions All right, here's another one. Okay. For students that are considering community college or Johnson and Wales, what would you say are the benefits of JWU? So I am certainly not here to badmouth any other school. There's amazing schools all across the country um, but one thing you're going to get at Johnson & Wells that you may not get at another school whether it's community college um, or or another university is um, our faculty we have amazing faculty at all four of our campuses that have you know 10 15 20 is some even 25 30 years of industry experience uh, and they are going to bring that into the classroom so you're not necessarily just learning out of a textbook and I'm certainly not saying that's how uh, professors 
professors at other colleges teach, but I know for a fact, um, you know, how our professors are at Johnson and Wells and also having the, the access to them. You may not find that at every school you're looking at with, you know, being a smaller university and having smaller class sizes, you're going to have access to your, your professors. And um, that's one of, um, you know, my biggest things about Johnson & Wells versus other schools. Um, of course, one of the biggest benefits of a community college and, you know, going there versus uh, a university is going to be the cost. Um, but there again, that's something that you and the family have to kind of weigh out what, what the pros and cons of a, a community college, a state college, or a private university will be. But ultimately, once you do your research, you'll be able to make the best decision for you. And I always tell students, our application is free. The FAFSA Absolutely. is free. Do both. Apply to Johnson & Wales. Send us your uh, FAFSA and you will use the Providence, Rhode Island code 003404. It's the same for all four campuses. But give us a chance to make this affordable for you. Uh, we'll do all that we can to make it affordable. But you have to do your part too, as Robert Absolutely. said earlier, those outside scholarships. If there are any sophomores or juniors listening to this right now, my advice to you is start researching scholarships now. Don't wait until you're a senior to start looking for scholarships. It's not too late for seniors. There are still scholarships out there, but you really need to spend a lot of time looking for those outside scholarships. Absolutely. And, and kind of along the same lines, I, I tell students uh, at minimum, start looking at these scholarships your junior year. Uh, of course, a lot of them know you're not going to be able to apply for them at that point. Uh, most of them, you have to be a senior in high school. Um, but if you're looking for these scholarships your junior year, a lot of them are offered year after year after year. Some of the scholarships I was awarded in high school are still being offered to this day. Um, but that way, grab a notebook, start jotting stuff down as you see it. Make sure you jot down the important information like a tentative deadline, the website, or wherever you saw it, um, what the requirements requirements are. But that way, when you get into your senior year, you have a game plan. You can do a, a page or two for each month. And that way you say, all right, it's September. I need to be applying for this scholarship and that scholarship. Um, but definitely want to have a game plan going in. Senior year is going to be busy. You're going to have lots of fun things. You're going to have uh, banquets and ceremonies, proms, graduations, uh, homecoming. And you don't want to uh, lose out the excitement of your senior year with, you know, uh, delaying the applying of four scholarships. So definitely want to spend the time looking for those. And I had a student that came in two years ago. We had given her significant scholarship dollars, but she also came in with $80,000 in outside scholarship money. And I said, how did you do it? She said, I put in 60 scholarship applications. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't do three or four scholarship applications and think you're going to hit the jackpot. It's just like the lottery. The more tickets you buy, the better your chances. So you need to put in as many scholarship applications as possible. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you all very much. Again, my contact information is on the screen. Um, so uh, feel free to, again, screenshot it, jot it down on a piece of paper. Um, but please reach out to me at any time. Um, also, Kathy Jo Mitchell is going to be a great resource. Um, so I will probably, if you reach out to me, let me know that you um, saw me today. So that way I can get your information over to Kathy Jo, because Kathy Jo is local um, within the area that you're located as well. And she'd be more than happy, uh, you know, going forward. At, at some point when we're able to, you know, meet in person again, but meet with you and your family uh, in, a, in a, the local area. So definitely take advantage of every single resource you have available to you. But I'm going to go ahead and end the session. But again, thank you all so much. I wish all of you the best of luck, and I hope everyone has a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Kathy. We we'll look forward to staying in touch. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.